It's just so blended very well. You know, it, 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 it came to me somehow that we have been asked to wear red. <laughs> and you know the funniest thing? I didn't actually plan this red, but I was looking for something to wear in my wardrobe. I didn't find anything, and this happened to me. I said, oh, it was not planned for me. But it's good that we are all kind of red. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus sets us free in every way. In Jesus' name. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. And I want to welcome everyone to church this morning. It is Mother's Day. Please say Happy Mother's Day to a woman beside you, a mother beside you, a mother's to be. Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. Happy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. I want us to bow our heads. It's going to be a short set of ministration of the word, and afterwards we can fellowship together. I just want us to pray. What do you want from this service today? Is Mother's Day service. But what do you want from this service? You are a man and you are in this place. Don't just say it is Mother's Day. God has something for you here today. Father, speak to my heart. We're going to say to him, God, speak to my heart. Let my life be transformed in this service. Let me not go back the same way I came. If you have come with any burden in your heart, the Lord says he's here to take away every burden. Because the anointing of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison door to those who are bound, to comfort all those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to proclaim to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Every spirit of heaviness, we command you to bow at the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he, God, might be glorified. God be glorified in this service today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My Mother's Day preaching today is more of, like uh, Sister Simba was saying in Bible study, refresher. Refresher course. You know, in the company I work for, we do something called GMP, Good Manufacturing Practice. You know, it's every year you have to do it. It's a refresher course. So it's not like you, you've never done it before, but it's just to remind you, you know, to just check that you are still, you know, everything is still together. And I think also health and safety, I'm not sure if you've done yearly as well. There's something also called, we call pharmacovigilance. That's as well, you have to do it yearly. Not that you didn't know it before, but just to refresh you. So you don't go back to doing what you said you will not do, you know. So it's a refresher course for us mothers today and women generally. So it's a refresher course. And it's not just for women. So the men, you know, don't think you're not going to get anything from it. Apply it to your life as well because it's a general refresher course. And I want us to just be relaxed today. You know, it's not going to be a spiritual, but yet it is practical. I want us to apply practicality to our spiritual work so that things can be better for us. I mean, the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So I'm talking about the queen, the deliverer, and the builder. If you're writing down, the queen, the deliverer, and the builder. Praise God. Esther chapter 4, verses 6 to 14. That's where I'm going to take my text from today. And also Proverbs 31. I'm not going to read Proverbs 31, but because the top verses 1 talks about the virtuous woman and all of the things that the virtuous woman does that makes her stand out to be virtuous. But I'm going to read Esther chapter 4, 6 to 14. Esther chapter 4, 6 to 14. If you are turning your Bible, Esther chapter 4, 6 to 14. Hallelujah. I wonder what's, what's wrong with Nathaniel this morning. He's still in temperature as well. We decree the healing of God upon him in the name of Jesus. It's not usually like that. Peace on all sides in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Esther chapter 4, 6. So, actually, Hathach went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in front of King's gates. Verse 7. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him. This was when, after they had said that they were going to kill the Jewish people. So Mordecai told Acha all that had happened and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. Verse 8. 
He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, that he, she, that he might command her to go in the king, into the king, to make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. Verse 9. So Akash returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Akash, verse 10, and gave him a command for Mordecai. Verse 11, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the courts, inner courts, the king, who has not been called, he has but one law to put them to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may leave. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king's, in, into the king these 30 days, as I was saying. So they told Mordecai Esther's word. So when the words came to, Mod to Esther that the kings, the Jews were going to be destroyed, that was what Esther thought about first. She thought about herself. And I don't blame her. Look, I have not been called to go and go to the king. Because there was a standard. You can't just go anyhow to king and say, I want to see, I want to speak to you, the king. Even though she was queen. But there was a there was a rule. There was a rule she had to follow. She couldn't just go and say, I've got a request. She, there has to be a time had to come to go and present her. And she was saying, it was not my time to go to the king yet, to go and present this thing. You know, anybody who goes when it's not their time will be killed. That's the law that is written now. And look at what Mordecai said in verse 13. Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do you do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than any of the Jews? Verse 14. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. We can read the rest of the story. We know that eventually Esther went to the king's palace and deliverance was given to the Jew. And Mordecai was rewarded. He was also promoted. And Haman was hanged. You know, God came through for Mordecai just because there was a queen who was a deliverer who was also a builder. And that was in the person of Esther. She was a queen and God used her as a deliverer. And she did not stand at her limitation of fears. She did not allow her fears to limit her from doing what God had called her to do. She saw herself as a queen, and she was indeed a queen. Woman, I want to tell you that you are a queen. Like I said to you, it's a refresher course. Not like you don't already know. The Bible says we are kings and priests. And so, we know the Bible does not distinguish between genders. So when the Bible says kings and queen and priests, it's not just talking about men only. The Bible is saying if you are a woman, you are a queen as well. So if you are a woman, a godly woman, you are already a queen. You don't need a physical crown. You already have a crown in the spirit realm because you are a child of the king. So you are a queen. And the Bible calls us kings and priests. So we are queens. And then Esther, also being a queen, was also a deliverer because she did not allow her fears to limit her. She didn't allow where she was coming from or her background or being a Jew or not knowing her father, or not being brought up by her fathers to limit her. Even the fear of being killed, she didn't allow it to limit her. She put herself on the line and decided to go in and see the king because there was a need for the God's people to be delivered. And the Bible says, who knows whether you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And I want to ask, to throw that to someone. Who knows whether you are married to this man for a time as this? Who knows whether it is you? Why it is it you that have that child who seems to be challenging? Who knows whether you have come and become the mother for a time as this? You don't know the future God has for that man or for that child. And speaking to us women, but also is applicable to men. Who knows whether you are in that job for a time as this? And this comes to any challenge you may be going through in life. Who knows whether you have come to this world for a time as this. Why are you the one who is struggling and paying all of the, all the bills while the man seems like he's just struggling? Who knows whether you have been put there to compliment him and be his helper for a time as this? So every negative situation we seem to find ourselves, let's see it as who knows whether I have come to this kingdom at a time as this. And we will see that God will come through for us Sometimes what the enemy wants us to believe is that our negativity is meant to limit us because we are not seeing it from God's angle. 
We're not seeing it from, God, from God's perspective. E.g., a woman just had a, a, a children, and maybe she was not told before. Suddenly, the child came out and it was she had Down syndrome. Do you think it's, the woman will be happy that the child had Down syndrome? No. But who knows? Rather than sitting down and crying over it and thinking and thinking, why me, why me? Who knows why God has made you the mother of that child? Who knows? It's not the most palatable situation. But every insignificant situation, every situation that seems adverse, see it from the God angle. All things work together for good to those that love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Who knows whether you have come to this kingdom for a time as this. Insignificant situations brings out our strength more. It puts us all out in the open. It makes people see the strength of God displayed in us. Who knows whether you have come to this kingdom as a time as this. So as a queen, let us not see insignificant or adverse situation as a way to limit us. Let us see it as a way to let the glory of God shine through us. Who knows whether you have come to this kingdom as a time as this, as a time like this. Why am I the only one struggling? Why am I struggling? For 20, 20 something years that I've been married, I've been struggling. Who knows? Rather than complaining, who knows whether you have come to this kingdom as a time as this. There's something called destiny. When God has destined something for us, God will give you the grace to fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says a wise woman builds a home in Proverbs 14, 1. But a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. A foolish woman tears her home down with her own, her own hands. But a wise woman builds her home. And that is what a queen is. A queen is a deliverer. Esther was a deliverer. Also a builder. So you build. So everywhere we are as women, let us see ourselves as builders. Builders. It is not only men that are builders. I know the building job out there is mostly done by men. <laughs> okay? But we are builders. In our homes, we are builders. If you find yourself in a workplace, be at a builder mentality, not a destroyer mentality. A destroyer mentality is a gossip mentality. A destroyer mentality is forming cliques, trying to destroy what another person has built. As women, the enemy tries to put destroyer mentality in our heart because we are people who talk a lot. We talk, and you find that a lot of women, unfortunately, gossip as well. You know, much more than men. <laughs> okay? There are some men that gossip more than women. Oh, I've seen some men who gossip more than women. <laughs> okay? But mostly, generally, if you have a statistics around, you find that most women, it's, it's mostly amongst women that there's bickering, there is fighting, there is gossip. Ah, I've seen some men. They'll be fighting like that. I've seen, I've seen a man. I wonder how this woman was living with that man. The godly woman. This man, this man, that man. From the time you enter the house as you go, is nagging about one thing or the other. Why did you put your shoe there? Why did you put your? It was a clean. It was a house. His house was perfect. He was the one who did the cleaning in the house. It was just if I was than a, a, a nagging wife. Worse than a, they are not together anymore now. <laughs> you know because this, this the woman had run. Of course, worse than a nagging wife. As you enter their house, from what he won't even care that there were visitors around. He will nag every little thing every, as we come in. The wife will already be saying, please put your shoe there because of my husband. Please put your shoe. He doesn't care. He will nag the wife from, from the place. Why did you put your place in the sink? Why is it not washed? I got to the, to the bed. The bed is scattered. Everything. Okay? So, I've seen some men that are terrible as well, unfortunately. You know, but we find that it's most, this kind of attribute is mostly common amongst women. But God will give us the grace. So, we should have that mentality of a builder. Because if somebody has that mentality or that habit, they tear, not build. So when we have a mentality of a builder, it will be easy for us to build. So a wise woman, a woman who is a queen, is a deliverer and also a builder. Now we want to look at the attributes of a queen builder. Attributes of a queen, like I said, it's a refresher course. So this is the relaxing bit of it. So attributes of a queen builder. So please, just look straight. Before I came this morning, I told my, my daughter, the last one, not the first one, because I know she will be able. I said, when I'm preaching today, don't start pointing hands at me. Don't start thinking, mm, mm, you do that. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, don't do that today. You know, because some of the things I'm going to say, they apply to me as well. I also need to check myself. I also need to do refresher course. That's why I said this is a refresher course for us. 
Because as women, we have to do a refresher course. How am I doing in this area? You know, how am I doing in this area? So we can be helped. Because adverse situations and things happen to us all. It does not exclude pastors. It happens to everyone. So and God will help us to be able to do this refresher course and see how we are doing, how we are coping. Because this thing affects our health. So we need to be, be coping well in, in all of these situations. Number one, make the most of an insignificant situation, which I said. And this includes adverse circumstances like having challenging relationships, having challenging children. Okay? Let us make the most of it. If you have a challenging relationship, make the most of it. It can be challenging as long as your life is there and you are going on and it's not abusive. There may be challenges. It could be finances. There may be other little challenges there. As long as you have decided to still stay in that home, make the most of any insignificant situation. Or if you have a challenging child, challenging children, it may not just be um, the you know health health issues. It may be there may be other things. There may be challenging behaviors. Let us make the most of it by seeing it as I have been called for a time as this. Number two, we should be family loving. As a woman, it's unwise to abandon the responsibility of building your home to your husband or some other person. So please, let us love our family. Let us, let's not abandon, let us not give that responsibility to someone else. Let us always be family loving. Love to be amongst your children. Let us make time to be able to love our families. And the family also includes the husband, not the children only. You know, not the children. Because what we tend to do as women is we forget about the husband. Sometimes we, we try to cater for the children, especially when they are just still small. And then we ignore the husband and the responsibility shifts from the children to the from their husband to the children. We don't want to do that. So refreshing our courses, refreshing our role as mothers, let us try to remember that we need to be family loving. Number three, let us have a heart of gratitude. Be thankful for what you have rather than complaining about what you don't have. And this is very important because we women, we complain, unfortunately. Complain. So let us complain less. Let us be, 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 be thankful. When the complaint wants to come, ah, this child, this, you know, let us just say, God, I thank you. I thank you for praise. I thank you for, you know, rather than the complaints, let us be thankful for them. So when we, when we are thankful, we will begin to see the good things about them. So complain less. Thank God for that husband you have. Know that some people are just waiting. You know, some people are just waiting to have that husband that you are complaining about. That is putting his shoe in the steel room and that's the major complaint. You know, so be thankful for what you have. It's important. It's a refresher course. So the Bible says in Proverbs 25, 24, it's better to dwell at a rooftop than to dwell in a nagging wife. Or a nagging husband, like the case I talked about. You know, so if you always want to find something to complain about, you will see many. You will see many. But if you look for something to be thankful for, the same way there will be many things that will be coming up to be thankful for. So if you are looking out to complain, there will be many more things coming out. But if you are looking out to be thankful, you see the hair, you are thankful for it. Immediately you, you see the eyes again, you are thankful. You see the nose, you are thankful for it. More things will come that you are thankful for. So dwell your thoughts on positive things as a woman. And that will help us to create light atmosphere. No matter what happens. So when we think about a heart of gratitude and we are grateful, it helps us to create a light atmosphere around us. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, my brethren, whatever things are pure, whatever things are noble, whatever things are good reports, think of these things. If there is any virtue, if there is any praise, think on these things. So we need to think about things that will make us thankful. As a woman, build with joy. As a queen, deliverer and builder, let us build with joy, with joy. Stay a joyful mood in your home. Please let us do this. Let us not be too serious. Me inclusive. Let us not be too serious. Let us take it because it takes stress away. When we stay a joyful mood, a laughing mood in our house, play some music around, do silly things with your children, with your husband. You know, let us just relax. Especially today being Mother's Day, let us do something different. Let them say, Mommy, what is happening? You know, you are different today. I'm hoping that my children will say that when I get home. You know, uh, you are different today. Uh -uh, you are not sleeping. Because <laughs> like, ah, you've been sleeping. Sleep, sleep. I said, I'm doing a lot. That's how I'm sleeping. You know, for a change, you are not sleeping. You are relaxing, putting your feet up in, the, in front of the TV. You know, let them say 
something different. Then, ah, mommy, how come you haven't shouted at me to take the bin out this morning? What is happening? <laughs> you know, I, I let them see something. Just laugh over it. Because I, I know Isaac, you will take the bin out anyway. I'm using my son as an example now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so let us, let us create a fun, loving environment. Stir up joy in the house. Today, let us start from today. From today. I'm going to start from today. So I'm encouraging us to start from today. Children, please take notes. Let mommy start from today. And I'll say, no, I'll not say push it to the extent that mommy will not shout. <laughs> you know, not that. But please, let us start from today and God will help us. Stir up joy in the house and God will help us. It shouldn't always be a tense atmosphere. It shouldn't always be a tense atmosphere in our homes. God will help us in Jesus' name. As a queen, make yourself lovely every day. And all these things, you know, I said they are refresher course. You know, make yourself lovely every day. Don't let it only be when you are coming to church, please. Especially if you have a husband. Don't let it only be when you are coming to church. Don't, 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 you know. <laughs> exactly like Reverend Ken, my, my mentor would say. You know, don't put air nets. Don't let the man be seeing you with air nets every time. And only when you are going to church, you now put wig on. And then, ah, who is this? You become a, a completely different person. Meanwhile, it's the same pyjamas. It's the same hair nets that you've been using for so long. You know, so as a queen, make yourself lovely every day. Create, uh, greet your husband and children with a hug. And some kisses. If it's cultural, in some places where I come from, if you kiss your husband too much in the sight of your children, they will, they will ah, hi, you. Well, what, uh, what is it that they say? You know, but uh, some other cultures, it's not strange when they see daddy and mommy kissing, oh, they just take their eyes off. It's not strange because it's normal. You know, so it depends on how you greet your husband, how they would appreciate that you are greeting them. So let us greet our children and husbands with love, with a hug, with a welcome attitude, in a way that they would also be relaxed and the home would be a happy home. So refresh our course. Use your time wisely, please, very important. Not social media. Please, don't let's spend too much time on social media. Every time, Facebook, internet, LinkedIn, all of that. Please, let us use our time wisely. You have to deliberate, be deliberate about spending too much time on the internet, including movies, Nollywood, Netflix. Let us be deliberate. Um, it's okay if we're dealing with family, but if every time is internet, every time social media, you can't even listen to what the child did in school. When they come from school, you, they've never heard you say, how was school today? Not to talk of them telling you what their school was or how their school was. You have not even, when they woke up in the morning, they've seen you on the internet, they can't even tell you the dream they had. If God showed them something in the dream that you should pray about, you know? So please let us be conscious of using our time wisely. Because nowadays, the major thing that takes the time of people is internet or social media. It takes a lot of people's attention. A lot of attention of women. Parties. A lot of attention. You look at party from party to party, from party to party. Look at the people tying gaming. There is always something to keep us company on, on social media. Let us be conscious of that. Refresh our course of being a queen, a deliverer, and a builder. Let your home be clean and inviting. This is important. Let's remember. I said to you, it's a remind, remind, reminder thing. Not that I've been to anybody's house and it's dirty. No, not that. Including my house too. I'm saying let our home be clean and inviting. Let things be kept in particular places. Let your children know. Shoes are not allowed in this place, in this part of the house. Let them know where they should cover bodies. Let them know where to hang their coats. Including daddy. You know, Pastor Bola McCarthy, when she came for the women's conference, she gave a, an example of her son. She said, um, her son... She said to her son, take your shoe upstairs. Take your shoe upstairs. And the son was asking, has dad taken his own shoe upstairs yet? <laughs> so he's just saying that they look at us as us we do. So if they know shoes are not allowed, they won't put shoes there. If they know, you know, so let our houses be inviting and clean. As women, we, we tend to be busy. If you are too busy, honestly, pay for the service. Because if you are too busy, maybe you are working, you are making money. Pay someone who can clean the house for you. There are many people who are waiting to earn the money. It doesn't mean you are a lazy wife. No. It doesn't mean you are a lazy woman. Or maybe your children are spoiled when you are doing that. The children are going to school once, once in two months. It used to be once a month. But before that, I have someone come and clean my house once a month. 
Thorough cleaning. It's not that we don't clean every day. We clean every day. But thorough cleaning that we don't see, that the children, the children can over. But now I change it to once in two months. You know, when fuel price and things went up, I just wonder and said, please, come once in two months. You know, once in two months like that, I have someone who does thorough cleaning. You know, when um, David's president and his wife, <laughs> when they visit, when they spend the night at, at our house at the last, the wife was asking me, how did you get the kitchen, the, 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 the bathroom window clean like this? I said, I have someone who cleans thoroughly. <laughs> Much more than I just do. You know, on a, on a regular basis, we just over. We just do, you know. So you can get someone, plan and pay someone. You are making the money, pay someone who will do it. So that your house will be inviting and always clean. I mean, young children is no excuse. Let us not give excuses of my children are small. My children, no. Let us not give those excuses. Let us endeavor to make sure that our homes are clean and inviting by whatever means. And God will help us in Jesus' name. So another thing, refresher course. Make sure you are at the forefront of building your home. And this is very important, especially in places where they have maids. It's not so common in this country. You know, where they have maids, where they have people who help them. Here, childminder, you know, au pair, living with you. You know, in all of it, it's good to get help, like I said. Pay for the service because you are doing other things. But make sure you are at the forefront of decision making. Don't give your responsibility as a mother, as a wife. Don't give it to a pair. Don't give it to the nursery. Don't give it to, to, to the, the person who comes to stay with the children when you are out. This may not apply, apply to people whose children have grown up a little bit, but don't give it to the teachers. Don't give it to social media or peer pressure. You know, and the, as a woman, as a woman, even when you are married, married or not married, make sure you are at the forefront of building your home. Is important. There are some things men cannot do. There are some decisions. There are some advices men cannot give your children. There are some things that your children will be able to tell you not their dad. You know? So make sure you are at you are you are sensitive. You are at the forefront. You don't leave it to people to teach them outside. Don't say they are grown up. They can see it on TV. Are they not watching those programs? Can they see no? Be at the forefront of building your home as a children, the Lord as a woman. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Another thing, trainer course, be smart, informed, and proactive. That's very important. Let us be smart. Don't be, don't start asking them, how, how do you, how do you use TikTok? That's the, my own common question. Ah, mommy, you, this is how to do it now. Because you know I'm on social media preaching. And I'm asking, how do you do this, this TikTok? Ah, and she's wanting, can't you read it? You know? It's just a, an example, even though that's a small example, but let us be proactive and informed. Let's not be arcade in our thinking. Let's not be old-fashioned. Let's improve ourselves. Where you were when your husband met you, don't be at the same position. Improve. Improve. Develop. If you were not driving before, start driving. You know? If you were not, if you, you know, improve. Think of something to, not look at yourself from when you first got married or when you first had that child to now. Have you improved? If the answer is no, then you need to think of, ask God for how to improve. So be proactive. Let's, let's let, let our, our, our thinking go wide. Let's be informed. Don't, don't, let's, don't, don't let's leave everything to the men, kind of. Don't let the man be, be the one informing us of what is happening on the news. Some people don't even know who the prime minister is. They'll turn to their husband and say, well, who is the prime minister of the UK now? You know, no, let us be informed. What is happening? Let us be informed. You know, so God will help us in Jesus' name, especially when we have husbands that, and God bless our men. You know, men like history, they like to, a lot of men like to be very informed, you know, very, like my husband, he used to really like to read those history things. So I became very lazy. I would just ask him, so who, who is Hitler? And he opened his mouth, ah, Hitler. You don't know Hitler. You will not stand up that me. Ha ha. For that. You don't know Hitler. I'll say, ha ha. Tell me now. You don't need to. Yeah, tell me. I don't know Hitler. You know, silly things like that. You know, so sometimes we women, we tend to be lazy when we have, you know, husbands that are, are very informed. But we need to be informed. Know what is happening. Know, let our, 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 you know, so that the man can see that, look, I'm marrying a wife who can contribute in other ways. Not just in the home. Not just cooking. Not just looking after the children or satisfying me in any way, but who can contribute in, in, in other ways 
much more than, you know, so God will help us in Jesus' name. So refresh our course. I know we are doing this already, but sometimes we may relax in it. That's why we are refreshing ourselves. So as a queen, a, a deliverer and a builder, seek ways to manage your money. Very important. Seek ways. The Bible says the virtuous woman laughs at the time to come because she has planned for the days ahead. Proverbs 31, 25. So plans for the days ahead. Don't plan for now. Think about it. So planning for the days ahead does not mean you lack faith. Please let us know that. It doesn't mean when somebody asks you, don't say, ah, it is lack of faith now. How can I be saving? It's lack of faith. You know, no. Plans for the days ahead. Sometimes men do not see the days ahead. Unfortunately, God has given us women instincts to be able to see the days ahead. And to even see some things that men, men don't see. You know, like when a woman is hanging, as a good example, a woman is hanging around your husband. The husband cannot see sometimes. He can't see that the woman is looking for something else than just friendship. And you as a woman, you are already seeing it. And you are taking, telling the woman, you are telling the man, ah, he, this woman that keeps, keeps shaking, shaking, shaking in front of you all, all the time during service. Why is she like, Mr. Ah, is it not sister? Ah, there's no one like that in that church. This church, I'm just saying it. Is it not sister at this? Uh -uh, it's just, she's just being herself. She's, not, she's just hushing now. Ah, no. How come it's only you? She's, 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 she's hushing. And she, every, anytime you come in, she'll come in. She'll pass. She'll pass. I'll be not coming now. You know? Women, we have that instinct. We see it when men do it. The same way we can plan towards the future. Men may not really plan that much. Some men plan. Don't get me wrong. Some men are excellent. More than women. But much more. Women. We plan, we need to plan towards the future. Don't think about the eating of all the resources now. Let us put some money aside, plan towards the future, the house and everything that God has put in our hands to build. Let's invest and seek ways to manage our money, our finances and plan towards the future. Let your family be bonded together. Do not encourage siblings' rivalry. This is very important. Don't favor one kid above others. And I'm sure the children will love this. Don't favor one kid more than the others. It's not good to sow seed of this God amongst your kids. It's not good. Sometimes it's tempting. And the children don't know when we are correcting them. Sometimes from when we are being, you know. Because honestly, as a mother myself, I see that these things sometimes is the children not really understanding how we are correcting them. And especially because of where we also grew up from. For example, when my mother wanted to correct me that in those days, she would compare me with my sister. <laughs> you know? She would say, look at your sister there. She's hardworking. You, you are lazy. You understand? <laughs> you know, you understand? And then they would say, ah, see, you are 18 years old. See what you are doing. Your mates are in boarding school. <laughs> so I have my own children. I'm correcting them the same way. And I'm thinking, what did my daughter say? Mommy, my mates are not in, in secondary school yet. <laughs> they are not in secondary school yet. I'm only eight, you know. <laughs> I said, go to Nigeria. Some eight year old, they are in secondary school already. They are in boarding school already, you know. So, I mean, this this is in in this world nowadays. These children see it as comparing comparing them with somebody else. But honestly, children, if you are listening, it's not like we are comparing. You know, it's just to scare you up. Because this thing has two, two, it has two things that it can do to you. It can either wake you up or it can make you think. So see the person talking to you. See, does your mom love you? If you know your mom loves you, then you know they are trying to wake you up. Trying to say, look, this is like a refresher course. It's the same way. They are refreshing you. Look, be, be smart. Your mates are here. It's not to compare. Then let us not encourage, you know, as... I remember then, in our growing up years, we'll ask our parents. Ah, we don't even know. Which who is Daddy, who is your favorite? Ah, I don't know our favorite. Everybody is my favorite. Ah, hey, mommy, who is your favorite? I don't have favorites. Everybody's like, ah, I found it difficult to believe that everybody is. Ah, and I'll be thinking, I think he's tired. Mm, I think he's accurate. I'll be thinking, I will not think myself. Because I will think of the times I've gone to mommy too. Because I was the one with the big mouth amongst the three of us. We were, we were only three. I was the one with the big mouth. If they want to do something, I'll, do one, I'll be the one they will push forward. Go and tell daddy this. Because I will not fear daddy's face when I tell him. But the two of them will still be putting, pull, pulling back. You know? So I tend to feel that because I do that, I get shut up more. You know, go and see that. Why, why is your mouth big? Why is it not things like that? You know? So then you 
will be asking, who is your favorite child? You know, so let us let us make it difficult for our children to be able to tell who the favorite child is. You know, I don't, I don't. That's the truth. Good question, sister. Okay, I don't even have a favorite child because you know that, that's what happens. A good, a good example. No, sister. Okay, it is true. <laughs> good, good. And I like this how this is going. The reason is because. One, one child can demonstrate a good skill to them. Yes. Yes. You see, the mothers are agreeing with me. Another child can demonstrate a skill that is good another time. Yes. And you are thinking, ah, oh, this is better than the one the other time. Yes. So, it's hard to tell who the favorite child is. And children, honestly, it is hard for a parent to tell who the favorite child is. There is no favorite child. Yes. For mothers. Yes. For mothers, no favorite child. Because I could say, oh, blessed is doing this for me today. And then pray did it better tomorrow. For example, my TikTok. I asked Blessed, can you do my TikTok for me? <laughs> when I first went on TikTok, she said, No, oh, Mom, I can't really, I don't know how to. By the time I asked Praise, and she put the lyrics on, I said, Ah, so your sister can even do it better than you. At that time, she was my favorite child. child. At the other time, Blessed was. So it, it depends on what, what is happening at that time. So as mothers, we don't have favorites. We don't have favorites. Yes, I think I've, I've, I've brought some discussions there. <laughs> okay, I've brought some discussions there. Safi is telling Bradley or something. He asked me, which child. <laughs> Sorry, the last one. Sometimes the last one likes to think that they are favorite children. And the reason is because they are corrected less. They are corrected less, but are they really the favorite children? Sister Tuke said it depends on the circumstances. Yes, that is very true. You know, so you can be my favorite child tomorrow. I can tell you all tomorrow and you will think blessed is the favorite child or I think it's the favorite. Or you know, so uh, honestly it depends on. So you want to be a favorite child, children, listen to your mom. You want to be a favorite, always do what they say. So today you will be favorite child. Tomorrow you will not even know me. So always do what, what they say you should do. Then you will be favorite child. So stop thinking another person is favorite child. For us mothers, we usually we don't have favorite children. We don't have it's any child that does what we say at that time is the favorite child. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now the last but not so encourage bonding. Encourage bonding. The last but not the least, and we're gonna stop on this and pray. Deep relationship with God and commitment is very important. Let your family be devoted to God and spend time together seeking Him in building. No foundation is stronger than the foundation of Christ. None. And we are building a home. We are building a family. It can never be stronger without Christ. Never, 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 never. It may look like it's strong. It will be shaky later. So always build on Christ. Let your family be committed to God. Let them know what you stand for in that home. Let them know that you are a lover of God. Let them know that you worship God. Let them know you encourage prayer. I tell you, even in pastor's homes, Women, you find that it's wives that call prayers. I'm telling you. Because I've had a lot of statistics, including my own home. When my husband was alive, I would be the one, honey, let us pray. Honey, because I'm planning, I'm looking at we didn't pray last week. We have to pray. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, he's just living his life. It's not that he doesn't want to pray. You understand? But it's the way God has created us women. So don't think, look, he's the priest of the home. So he has to take his place. It's true he has to take his place as a priest. But you see that he's not doing it. Please. Don't let the family prayer time suffer. Call everybody together and say, look, children, let us pray. Daddy is washing ball. He can join us later. Continue it. Later, you see daddy joining us. When I was growing up, my daddy never used to join us for prayers. I must say. It was just my mom. In fact, because he wasn't joining her, her prayer wasn't regular. Her family prayer. So we would decide, we will be praying today, we will be praying today. And we can do it for one week. Another week, we will stop again. You know? Because, of course, my parents weren't born again then. But they were Christians, you know, by Christian by religion. So they were not their faith. You know, now my mom is more committed to, and before my dad passed away as well, I was more committed to the faith, but they were not at the time. So, so it's when we pray, we pray. When my mom just, oh, we want to, another thing we're doing then, then we will say, we want to start speaking English in this house. <laughs> so you see, we want to do it for one week. After that, everybody goes, but my dad never, got, got, never participated. He would say, we want to start speaking English in this house. The next, we, not for me, but what for me, I will say, Daddy, we are speaking English. They will not even answer us. The same way they used to answer us when we say we want to start praying. They won't join us. But we continued. Sometimes we did it sometimes. So, but as 
Christians, we know better. Okay? So we are building on the foundation. We are privileged that we are in Christ. So we have to build on the solid rock, which is Christ. So it does not matter if the children are old, whether they are young, let us have a family devoted time. Because in some families, it works. They can do it daily. Some homes, it may not be daily. It may be once a week. However you want to do it in your family, let them know that this is your time of prayer. In some families, it could be once in two weeks. Let them know this day, there will be time. You will find that even when the child goes to university, they can connect from their university. And they will call and they say, Mom, I remember that end of the month, we all, all have to pray together for 20 minutes or 10 minutes and we share the Bible together. And they call. And so they may be far away, they still connect. Okay? So it doesn't have to be like everyday thing. Because sometimes when we make it everyday thing, it becomes too, too kind of like, we, we may not be able to follow it. Alright? You, in your home, every day may not work. It could be weekly that it works. But make sure you stick to it. The main thing is, build on the solid rock, which is Christ. Have time to share the word of God with your children. They will never forget. We find that some of us, some of the things we, we, are, we, we are reflecting today, so there are some things that we learned in Sunday school or when we were growing up. I was saying to Sister Simba during the month of love, which is February, I wrote things down for her. The love, um, love, love is patient and kind. It's not jealous or boastful. I said, can you read it to the children? Let them recite it every day. Because I remember that it was in Sunday school that I learned this thing. Now I quote it and people think, when I was learning it, it I didn't know it was Bible that I was learning. They just said, right, love is patient and kind. It's not jealous or boastful. It's not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist in its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. And meanwhile, I've quoted some, some scripture there. Okay? So those things that we instill in our children, they stay with them forever. They don't go away. Especially when they are young. They don't go away because they're not going to be with us forever. Let's remember that. So this is the time to put things in them that when they are away from us, those things will be speaking over their lives. The Bible says the word of God is in the tablets of their hearts. And I always say this pray, pray this prayer for us all. That in the tablets of their hearts is the word of God. So that even when they go away from home, it will be impossible for them to do wrong. Because the word of God in their hearts will be speaking that this is a wrong way to go. And the Lord will guide us. Give us the wisdom as mothers to really be builders. To be queen and look after ourselves. To be stress-free in every way. And to put God first. So that motherhood, parenthood, will be easy for us. On that note, I stop. And can I ask us to stand on our feet and begin to just pray. Pray for strength as a woman, as a mother. I want us to spend time, quality time praying. Pray for strength. Pray for strength. The Lord strengthen me, strengthen me as a woman. God strengthen me as a woman, as a wife. Strengthen me as a mother. Strengthen me. You are a single woman here and you are trusting the Lord to still give you your own child later on. Strengthen me. A young adult, strengthen me, God. I pray, Lord, one day I will be in this situation as well. I receive strength. Father, we pray for strength in the name of Jesus. We will not be tired. Begin to pray for the grace not to be tired in your role because this is your first ministry. Parenthood, you're being a mother. Is your first ministry before anything else. God, I will not be tired. Come on, begin to pray it. I will not be tired. I will not be tired. I will not be tired. I will not be weary. The Bible says, I will not, do not go weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. This is my time to begin to reap. God, my heart will not faint. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray, God, I will eat the fruit of my labor. Begin to pray. God, I will eat the fruit of my labor. Begin to pray it. God, I will eat the fruit of my labor. In the name of Jesus. As a mother, no one will represent me. Begin to pray it. Lord, no one will represent me. I will not be replaced. In the name of Jesus. You are a man here. Begin to pray for your wife. My wife will not be replaced. She will be the mother of our children. Until night time. In the name of Jesus. You are a child here. Begin to pray for your mother. Lord, give my mother longevity. That she will see my grandchildren. She will see her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Give my mother good health. Begin to pray it. Father, Lord, strengthen me. Give me good health that I will be there for my children. Lord, my days will not be cut short or terminated. My years will not be cut short or terminated. Strengthen me to be a good mother. As a woman, you begin to pray. God, give me wisdom. Wisdom to build. Wisdom to build my home. Wisdom to build my children. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Give me wisdom. Begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Give me wisdom. 
Wisdom is the principal thing. Solomon asked God, I need wisdom to rule these people you've given to me. They're going to say, God, give me wisdom to understand these children, to guide them in the way that they should go. How would you know the way a child go? You would not need the wisdom of God. He is the creator of that child. He can give you the wisdom to know how the child should grow. He will give you the wisdom to know what school the child will go to. He will give you the wisdom so you can advise this child and write. Whether they are doing a course or they are taking on a job, you need wisdom. Begin to ask God, give me wisdom so that I will be a good mother. Give me wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. To be able to direct my children, give me wisdom. To know how to lead my children, I need wisdom. Wisdom to instruct them in the way of the Lord. Give me wisdom, give me wisdom, give me wisdom. Pray for your mama, mothers. Pray for your wives. Pray, pray. If you are a woman, pray, pray. Pray for yourself. Lord, wisdom, wisdom. We receive, oh God, wisdom today. Wisdom today. Help us in the name of Jesus to manage our resources. Begin to pray as a woman. Help me to build and not tear. Help me to build and not tear with my mouth. Help me to build and not tear. In the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to build and not tear. I just want to say this as well. As a woman, I want us to come before God and ask Him. God, clear up any negative words that I may have said. That I did not mean. Because a lot of times when we are stressed, we may say negative things. Not because we want them to happen. We are going to pray for God have mercy. Those things will not happen in the name of Jesus. The negative pronouncement, I don't have money, it will not happen in the name of Jesus. Negative pronouncement, this child is a troubled child. It will not happen in the name of Jesus. We cancel them by the blood of Jesus. Negative words we have said out of anger. I cannot do it. We cancel by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Negative words we have pronounced over our children in error. We cancel in the name of Jesus. We cancel in the name of Jesus. It will not come to pass. Only the good will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. As women, we will declare the word of God upon our children. In the name of Jesus. Begin to say, God, as a mother, my children are blessed. My children are highly favored in the name of Jesus. My children will grow in the wisdom of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Begin to declare, as a mother, I pray for my children today. They will marry right. They will not marry wrong. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray for my children. They will marry right. They will not marry wrong. They will not be delayed in any area of their lives. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor you. Lord, as we come before you today, everybody please raise your hands to the Lord and let us receive strength from him. The presence of the Lord in this now midst. Father, release your strength upon us in this service as your angels are all around. Strengthen us from within. Let it manifest on the outside. Strengthen us by your spirit from within. Let it manifest on the outside. Take away every burden. In the name of Jesus. The anointing breaks yoke. Break every yoke in the name of Jesus. Clear and remove and wipe away our tears in the name of Jesus. Tears of sorrow. Tears of relationship. Tears coming from how challenging our children may have been. Clear it off, oh God. Wipe our tears in the name of Jesus. Clothe us with a garment of praise. Lord, take away every spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. To you, God, be all the glory. We are going to pray for women trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Women trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You are going to raise your voice and begin to pray for them. Those you may know and those you may not know. You are going to pray for them. Lord, answer their prayers. Open their womb. The Bible says in, in, in the book of Luke, it says Elizabeth, who had been who they had said was barren. This is the sixth month in which she had been pregnant. Because with God, all things are possible. Elizabeth, your cousin, who had been deemed barren, this is the six months. That means the pregnancy had pro 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 progressed past miscarriage. This is the six months in which she had been pregnant. This is the woman that had been turned barren, called barren, deemed barren. But the mercy of God found her. Mercy found Elizabeth as she conceived. John the Baptist, who was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, she had been deep barren. They are going to pray. There shall be no barren amongst us. In the name of Jesus. Everyone believing God for the fruit of the womb that I know. Answer them. Come on, raise your voice. In the name of Jesus. Marco Shotore. Marco Seto Lord, answer them in the name of Jesus. 
Those trusting God, my friends, trusting God. Anyone in this church trusting God for the fruits of the womb? We command your womb to be open in the name of Jesus. Together we command your womb to be open. The Bible says, if two of you shall agree, as touching anything you desire, it shall be done of your Father who is in heaven. We command your womb to be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Be open in the name of Jesus. Begin to raise your voice and pray. Pray for those trusting God to be mothers. God answer their prayers. As you are praying for them, God will answer your own prayers as well. Lord, thank you. This joy that I feel as a mother, let this person experience it. This joy that I feel as a mother, let this person experience it. Mention their names. God, I bring them before you. This joy that I have as a mother, let this person experience it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We remember those trusting you for the fruits of the womb. Answer their prayers, O oh God. Give them testimonies. We give you praise and glory. Magnify the name of the Lord because He hears us all the time. We worship you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Honor to your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.